Hey, this is Dr. Barry. In this video, I want to take a more in-depth look at what can cause your weight loss to stall on a ketogenic diet. Now, the ketogenic diet, uh, a whole food ketogenic diet, is one of the healthiest, most nutritionally complete diets that a human being can eat. There are literally hundreds, if not thousands, of health and medical benefits from eating this most nutritious of all diets. But many, many people come to this diet looking for weight loss, looking for long-term, permanent move towards their ideal body weight. And so those are the people I'm talking to today is if you're doing keto to lose weight and you've stalled out on that weight loss, we're going to talk about 13 different basic concepts today. And so obviously this is going to be a longer video. So grab a keto coffee, grab a glass of Keterade and settle in and let's talk about this. Now, if you know someone doing the ketogenic diet <clears throat> who stalled out or who thinks they're stalled out, please share this with them on your social media. You sharing these videos helps me help so many more people, okay? You can you know, feel free to share this in your keto group, in your low-carb, high-fat group, even in your paleo groups. It doesn't matter to me because everyone needs this information, okay? Now, let's go through this list, and you'll find as I go through this list that many of these topics kind of overlap a little bit, just like life. Life is messy, and so is any kind of weight loss or health improvement regimen nothing is clear cut and black and white. There are all these different shades of gray. And so we're going to talk about these 13 concepts. And I want you to watch this all the way to the end and see how many of these apply to you and how many of these you've actually went through and improved or changed to optimize your health with a ketogenic diet. So number one, first and foremost, we need to define what is a stall because so many people, when they first come to keto, they lose weight really, really quickly. And so then when they stop losing weight very quickly, then they immediately think, oh, I must be in a stall. And so let's talk about that. Basically, only if you're a man in your 20s or 30s and you haven't lost weight in a couple of weeks, then that might be a stall for you. But if you are morbidly obese, if you have been insulin resistant or type 2 diabetic for years, if you're a woman, or if you're over 40, then really you shouldn't even call a slowdown in your weight loss a stall until you've been stalled for at least a month, okay? So if you are a woman, you have to realize that your hormones are set up to protect you as a uh, the reproductive member of the species or the member who carries a pregnancy in your body to term. And so that can't happen if, if you're starving to death, if you've lost too much weight. And we've all heard stories about marathon runners and other women who just stop having periods altogether. And that's because their body is deemed it unhealthy for them to carry a pregnancy with that low of a body fat percentage. But all women will know this. If you've tried to do any form of weight loss with your spouse or especially ketogenic, that your spouse, your husband, lose weight faster than you do, right? And it's not fair, but that's just how life is. And so women have to understand that your weight loss will not be linear. Your weight's going to go up and down because of your hormones, because of fluid shifts, and because if you lose weight too fast, your body will put on the brakes through hormonal mechanisms because it freaks your body out, thinking, oh, we're losing too much weight. We won't be able to reproduce. Your body doesn't really know how old you are. Your body doesn't really know how much you weigh. And so you may have a lot of weight to lose, but if you lose weight too fast as a woman, your body will put the brakes on because it freaks it out. Does that make sense? And so don't worry about calling something a stall if you're over 40, if you're a woman, if you've been insulin resistant for years and years, you're not going to lose weight like that, like the average 20 or 30 year old guy does. That's not going to happen for you. You're going to lose weight in spurts, in stops and starts. It's going to be more of a, an up and down sinusoidal kind of weight loss. You'll gain two, lose three, gain one, lose two. And that's going to happen your entire weight loss journey. Get used to that. Understand that up front so that you're not worried if you don't lose weight for four days that you're in a stall. So if, if, you ha if, you're, if you're still losing weight over the course of a month, you're not stalled. You may not be losing it as fast as you want to, but that's not a stall. Okay, so that's number one is just to understand what a stall is and what it what it ain't. Number two is I encourage everyone to start measuring. Get a measuring tape like a tailor would use 
And the most important measurement of all is to measure your waist to height ratio. If that is above 0.5, then you know that you're at least some degree of insulin resistance, which is a medical problem. It actually increases your risk of heart attack, stroke, type 2 diabetes, and all these other things if your waist to height ratio is over 0.5. And I talk about that in other videos. But you've got to measure because a lot of times if the scale's not moving, the measurements still will be getting better. And so you're getting positive feedback to know that, okay, so the scale hasn't moved, but I'm still getting smaller in inches. And if you are, then that means you're also reaping all the other benefits of a good whole food ketogenic diet. So start measuring. And then also on this one, I would say stop weighing every day, especially if you're a woman, especially if you're over 40. I would pick a day of the week and have Monday weigh day or something like that and just weigh once a week. And that way you're not freaking out and stressing out over the fluid shifts and, and the things that your hormones can do to you after 40. Or if you're a woman, weigh every Monday, weigh every Sunday, just pick a day and weigh. Or you could really uh, be a vanguard and just not weigh at all. But that that freaks most people out. That's just too much. So number three. If you're coming to the ketogenic way of eating from the standard American or the standard Canadian way of eating, then it's possible that you have no idea how, how many grams of fat, how many grams of protein, and how many grams of carbs different foods have. That's possible. I came to this way of eating from paleo and low carb, high fat, and I kind of migrated to keto. And so, and plus I'm a doctor, so I kind of know or uh, intuitively, or at least from past experience, how many grams of fat or how many grams of protein this, that, or the other food would have. But if, if you've been eating the chicken strip and ketchup diet for the most of your adult life, and you have really honestly have no idea what the macros are of a particular food, then maybe you should download a macro app on your phone and maybe you should track for a few weeks or a month or two so that you can actually learn some nutrition because we don't get taught a lot of that in, in high school or college and even in med school. You don't learn a lot of that stuff. And so if you haven't picked it up along the way, you probably need to do some macro counting for a few weeks or a month or two to kind of increase your nutrition dietary chops, so to speak, so that you know when you pick up grass-fed butter, how many carbs does that have? How many grams of protein? How many grams of fat? So maybe you need to start tracking if you're truly stalled out for more than a month. The next number four is carb creep. And this goes right back to the tracking. You may not know that what you're eating has carbs in it, okay? And so, so many times we'll, we'll be eating a really good ketogenic diet, but then as the weeks and months go by, carbs will start to creep back in. And I'm going to talk about it in point five, how that, one of the many ways that can happen. But you'll start thinking, well, I'm going to have a few nuts. Ooh, I love nuts. I'm going to have a lot more nuts. And a lot of people don't know some nuts are very carby. My favorite nut of all is cashews, but I can't eat too many of those because they have quite a few grams of, of carbs in them. And so if you didn't know that, then you maybe need to download a tracker and start tracking so that you can keep up with carbs so that you don't fall prey to carb creep. There are creepy carbs and sneaky sugars and all kinds of different foods. And if you don't learn these things, then you could stall out and stay permanently stalled because you're just eating too many carbs. Okay, now number five kind of blends in with the last two. And this one is don't trust big food. Okay, the big food corporations like Kraft and Kellogg's and all those other guys don't give a damn if you never lose weight. They would actually like it if all you guys weighed 400 pounds because then you would eat more of their products. Okay, so they have several tricks that they can use to get you to eat carbs and you don't even know you're eating carbs okay here's some of the ways that big food will trick you and it's not because there's a conspiracy it's because they're in business to make money they're not in business to improve your health right so they get to round down now i was taught in third grade that if if a number is 0.5 or higher you round that up to the next number and i bet you were taught that too but big food doesn't have to do that. Something can have 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 0 0.9 grams of carbs. They get to round down, okay? Because saying it's zero carbs means in big food speak, it's less than one gram of carb. And so they get to round down. The next thing they get to do, they get to do that with protein. They get to do it with fat and carbs, but they'll do that as 
more and more people start to try to eat a low carb, high fat diet, they'll start to mislead you on how many grams of carbs and grams of protein are actually in the foods that they sell for a profit. Another thing they get to do is they get to make their serving sizes stupidly small. There is no governmental co committee that says, no, you can't say that a serving size is one quarter of a cookie. You don't get to do that because that's not common sense. The average consumer is not going to understand and they're not going to look at the label. They're going to think that your one big cookie is one serving because that's what normal people would think. Well, big food doesn't have to go by that common sense rule. They can put on the back in very small print that you may not even be able to read that there's four servings in this one big cookie. Yeah, that gets to happen, and that happens to people every day. And so the, what you thought had two grams of carbs actually has eight grams, but then they also got to round down, so it actually has 12 grams. And that's what you just ate, eating that one cookie. So you cannot trust big food. The other thing that they can do is they can, they can process these foods. And so they can give names to stuff like organic cane syrup. That's sugar, okay? They can call stuff maltodextrin. They can call things all these other names that you don't know what they are because you don't have a degree in nutrition, and that can stall your weight loss. They can also use sugar alcohols, and technically that's not a sugar. But as soon as you ingest the sugar alcohol, your body breaks off the hydroxyl group, and now it's a sugar. And so maltitol is, a, is one of the worst ones of all. Sorbitol is also very bad. And so a good rule of thumb is if something has the American Diabetic Association seal of approval, it probably uses sorbitol and it's going to stall your weight loss. If it, and then, uh, for example, you can't trust names. Like if they have keto in the name, if they have low carb, high fat on the label, if it says Adkins, because we all look up to and respect Dr. Adkins. He was one of the very first leaders of the low carb community. But now there's a corporation selling products under his name and they use Maltitol and it absolutely will stall your weight loss. It'll raise your insulin level. Not good for you at all. So don't trust big food. You, It's your job because this is your one body and your one life. You have to look at those nutrition labels and not just the facts. You have to read the ingredients. If you don't recognize a word on the label, you got to look that up. That's what the Google machine's for. Look that word up and find out, is that another word for sugar? Or is that a product, is that an ingredient that will elevate your insulin level and therefore turn off your weight loss? In the ketogenic diet, we're trying to keep our insulin level as low normal as possible because that encourages our body to burn the fat inside of our belly and on our belly and on our booty. That's the whole point of the ketogenic diet, right? And so do not trust big food. That's number five. Number six is decrease the stress in your life. And yes, I know, I know this is easier said than done, but you have to do this if you're trying to reach your ideal body weight. So, so far we've been basically talking about hacks for your insulin level, and that's the most important hormone when it comes to weight loss. The next most important is cortisol. And if you have a ton of stress, if you're if you're living with a life partner who you'd like to push down the stairs, or if you have two jobs, both of which you hate, if you're a shift worker, then all these things can raise your cortisol and cortisol can slow down or turn off your weight loss. Yeah. So it's a big deal to eliminate the bad stresses out of your life. Good stress can be good for you, like trying to lift more in the gym, trying to learn to play the piano or learn to juggle or learn another language. Those are stresses, but they're good stresses. They help you grow and help you learn and help you develop as a human being. But if you have bad stress in your life, you have to get that stress slowly but surely out of your life. Even if you do, don't get that stress out of your life today, if you just develop a plan, this is how I'm going to get that stress out of my life. Or if you set a date, by this date, I'm going to have that stress out of my life. Those things will lower your cortisol level as well. So either get the stress out of your life or develop a plan or set a date. Those will help keep your cortisol level low and that'll help you lose weight easier. Not easy, but easier, right? The next is you've got to optimize your sleep. 
If you are not getting enough sleep, if you're not getting enough good quality sleep, again, that raises your cortisol and it messes with all your other hormones and that can slow down or stop your weight loss. You need to be sleeping in a blacked out bedroom. You don't need to have any lights shining on your face. Even the alarm clock needs to be turned away from you. At 3.30 in the morning, you don't need to know what time it is, okay? You just need to be relaxing and trying to fall back to sleep. But if that alarm clock is, is shining 3.30 a.m. at you, you're going to start to think, crap, I got to get up in three hours or whatever. That's, that's then you just raise your cortisol worrying about that, right? So turn the alarm clock away from you. Turn off every television, every electronic screen, every computer, every light. If you need to hang something in your windows to black out your bedroom, it needs to be a blacked out cave. Your bedroom needs to be cooler. Most people sleep deeper and, and more effectively in a cooler bedroom. You need to have some white noise or some pink noise going that will distract your mind. So if a dog barks outside or if the neighbors upstairs are thumping their music, it's not going to wake you up as easily because your mind is lost in the pink noise or the, or the white noise, and you just don't hear that as a discrete sound. This is very, very important as you get older because you don't sleep as deeply. When I was 20 years old, you could hold me up by one leg and shake me, and I wouldn't wake up, right? Now, if I hear a dog bark outside, I might wake up and go, wonder what the dog's barking at. So for me, white noise and pink noise is huge so that I can stay asleep more hours of the night and stay in a deeper level of sleep. That's hugely important to keep your cortisol level and your other hormones optimized. Now, uh, number eight, for me, this was a big deal. And again, we're, we're hearkening back to number five, don't trust big food. Heavy whipping cream. Too much heavy whipping cream stalls me out because heavy whipping cream does have about 0.6 grams of carbs per serving, and it also has about 0.8 or 0.9 grams of protein per serving, and I think a serving is two tablespoons. And so if any of you guys have ever used heavy cream to make butter, you know that there's this cloudy liquid that comes out right before the butter forms. That's whey. Whey is a protein. Right. So it has heavy cream has to have protein or you couldn't make whey by making butter. So, yeah, heavy cream is not just pure fat. A lot of people don't realize that. And so when I switch my keto coffee from having heavy cream to having just grass fed butter, my weight loss picked back up again. And so that's one of the things that personally stalled me out. And I just wanted you to be aware of that. Number nine is too much protein. Now, I don't think that protein is the devil. I think that protein is pretty good for you. I think most of the time protein can be a little satiating, uh, which means it keeps, it keeps you full just like fat does. I think fat's better at that. But I think protein serves that. Plus, you need proteins and amino acids to build your body parts. But if you're, if you're having a few carbs and you're having too much protein, that can definitely slow down your weight loss. And another, that's another reason, if you don't know how much protein foods has in it, to go back up to number, what was it, three, and start tracking your macros for a while until you learn how much protein is in each different food that you eat. Um, so that's number nine, is, is eating too much protein. I think most people go by a calculation that figures – much more protein than they actually need. Your body is perfectly capable of burning the fat in your belly and on your belly and on your booty. That's what the ketogenic diet's all about. But also your body's perfectly capable of breaking down the protein, the collagen, the elastin, the fibrin, and using those amino acids to make new proteins. Your body can do that. So don't think you have to eat a ton of protein just because you're going to the gym or whatever. You do need some protein, but you don't need too much. Number 10 is using too much sweeteners and this also I used to put stevia in my in my keto coffee and when I took that out it took me a minute to get used to the unsweetened taste now I love it I don't even really like sweetened coffee anymore but if you're using too much sweetener especially if you're using any sweetener in your fasting window if you do intermittent fasting then that's gonna that's gonna bump your insulin up and that's gonna slow down your weight loss. But even during your feeding window, I think we all as Americans and Canadians and as as citizens of the world, we all just crave and want too much sweetener. We want a sweet taste with every meal, with every bite, some of us. That's not natural, okay? What we're trying to get back to is a whole food ketogenic diet like our ancestors ate 20 or 30 or, or 40 thousand years ago, they would go months and months at a time and not have a single sweet taste in their mouth. And their DNA got used to that. Well, guess what your DNA is? 
It's their DNA. It hasn't changed at all in 20, 30, 40,000 years. So you don't need sweetness in every bite. You don't need sweetness in every meal. You don't even need sweetness in, uh, in every day. You can go days without having any sweet taste in your mouth, and I promise you won't die. I promise you won't suffer after you get used to it. It just takes a little while to get used to that, and then you run just fine without having a sweet taste in your mouth every five seconds. So try to decrease and minimize and maybe even stop the sweeteners that you use, even if they're sugar-free. Some sweeteners bump your insulin level up just a little, little bit because of the sweet taste in your mouth because of something called the cephalic insulin response. I've actually been reading some some research that if you think about sweet foods, like if you're if you haven't broke your sugar addiction and you're dreaming about chocolate cake or chocolate chip cookies, just the thinking of it can bump your insulin level up a little bit. Yeah, true story. I know that's not fair and it sucks, but it's probably true. But just having a sweet taste in your mouth can bump up your insulin level and that can slow down or even stop your weight loss. So try to minimize the sweeteners. Now, number 11, something to try. If you've been doing and you've been following all those things I just talked about above, number 12 is try carnivore for two weeks or four weeks or six weeks. I don't, I'm not currently advocating the carnivore diet as a long-term solution, but it's great for killing off any remaining carb-loving bacteria in your gut. That's a big deal, your gut bacteria. But also, it just it also is going to get any sweet taste out of your mouth. You're not going to be using any sweetener on your meat, I hope. But for me personally, and then I, I know for multiple other people in the ketogenic community, They stalled out. They were doing everything. All the steps I listed above, they were doing those right, but they still were stalled. And so they did a two-week nothing but carnivore, which is meat, fatty cuts of meat, uh, egg yolks, and butter. And it kicked them back into uh, deep, deep ketosis. It, It also tells your body, hey, body, there's plenty of fat around, man. There's plenty of fat and protein. There's no reason to be holding on to fats. And no reason to be holding on to the protein that fat is locked up in, that connective tissue. So let's burn that off. And so for me, going carnivore for a month, two months now, really kicked me back in to losing inflammation, losing weight, losing fat. And so for a lot of people, that's a good try is to do carnivore for two weeks or four weeks or or six weeks or even longer but I don't recommend it as a permanent diet solution right now. But I'm going to I'm working on a diet about carnivory. That's the adjective that you would use to describe that diet. And I'm going to be posting that later on this YouTube channel and talking about it more and more on my Facebook page and on my Instagram account. So try carnivore for a few weeks and see if that won't kick you back in to weight loss. The next one is try to try fasting. If you're not blending intermittent fasting with your ketogenic diet, you're missing out on a lot of cool benefits. The the biggest one that we're all trying to benefit from is called autophagy. Autophagy is basically when your body starts to auto-digest parts of your body that it doesn't need. And anytime you talk about auto-digesting body parts, it freaks some people out. They're afraid that your body will start digesting your eyeballs or your brain or your muscles. But here's something to consider. Your, our, the human body and the human DNA has been on this planet for a long time. Your body and your DNA are very wise. They're very intelligent. If, if you start having the need to burn fat or burn protein and auto-digest or kick in autophagy, your body's not going to burn your retina, okay? That would be dumb. Your body's not stupid. Your body's not going to start to digest your brain or even your muscles or your liver or your internal organs. Your body's going to start to auto-digest parts of your body that you don't need, which is fat, which is the connective tissue the fat's in. If you have a precancerous lesion on your face, your body will just digest that, break it down into the amino acids, and it's like it never existed. Your body can get the fat out of your liver with autophagy. It can get the fat out of your pancreas, the most dangerous fat of all. Have you guys seen my my fatty pancreas video? I think I'm about the only video on YouTube that describes fatty pancreas and why you should really be worried about that. You can check that out after you finish this one. So autophagy from fasting is a big deal. Now, if you've never fasted before, I want you to start out very slow and work your way up. I'm working on a video now about how to do that stepwise and and actually start easy and then make it progressively more challenging. But if you do it slowly like that, it's no big deal at all. Now, the, the, the final step in this huge puzzle of 
your diet and your health and your life is medical. So if you've done all those things and you're still stalled out, it's time to go see a good doctor who understands nutrition, who understands hormones. Because after all, weight loss is not a calorie counting thing. It's not a calorie deficit thing. I'm sorry for those gurus out there who still spout that misinformation and act like, oh, you have to have a calorie deficit or you'll never lose weight. That's been proven false multiple times in very large, meaningful studies. Stop counting calories. Counting calories is stupid. Okay, you've got to optimize all your hormones. The two most important ones we've already talked about are insulin and cortisol. But you have other hormones that are in charge of weight loss as well. And so if you've optimized your your insulin and your cortisol hacking as much as you can and you don't know what else to do, go see a knowledgeable doctor and have him check some lab work. Check your thyroid. You want to check a complete panel. And if you want to know the complete panel, you can check out my Facebook page or you can go to a website called Stop the Thyroid Madness. And it has the complete list of thyroid tests that you need to have tested to thoroughly evaluate your thyroid. If your doctor is just checking one or two tests, he, he's behind the times. He needs to check up on his reading and you either need to educate him and make him your learned health partner, or you need to find a doctor who knows how to check your thyroid. Also on Stop the Thyroid Madness, there is a a section of doctors who understand the thyroid around the country and around the world, so you might find a doctor there if you can't train your doctor how to check your thyroid thoroughly. You also need to have your adrenal hormones checked thoroughly. You need to have your gender hormones checked thoroughly. If all those aren't checked thoroughly, then you may have Uh, low DHEA. You may have low vitamin D, which is a pro-hormone. You may have low progesterone or low testosterone. Any of those can slow down your weight loss to a glacial pace, which to you will feel like a stall. So get all your hormones checked by a knowledgeable doctor. And then if you need to have any of your hormones corrected or optimized, that same knowledgeable doctor will know how to do that as well. Another medical issue that's a big deal is you perhaps are taking a prescription medication that's stalling your weight loss. That's entirely possible. There are multiple drug classes that it's just, it's known in the medical community. They'll slow down your weight loss. They'll raise your insulin level. They'll raise your blood sugar. All of these things will slow down, if not stop, your weight loss. I've got another video on this YouTube channel about medications that'll slow your weight loss or raise your blood sugar, both of which will raise your insulin, and that's going to stop your weight loss. So you can check out that video after you finish this one. Now, that is a much more comprehensive look at everything that can possibly stall out your weight loss if your weight loss is in fact stalled. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to this channel and click the bell so that every time I have a bright idea, you'll be one of the very first people to know. If my videos have really helped you a lot and perhaps improved your health, please just take a second and click on the Patreon link down below. You can sign up very quickly there and you can throw a buck or two my way just so I have more time to make more videos just like this. If this video was too long for you, I'm sorry. I, I try not to make long videos, but I really wanted to have a comprehensive video where you, somebody who stalled out or thinks they are could go to and really look at this. So if you think this would help people in your keto group or your low-carb, high-fat group, you have my permission to share, the, share it there so that I can help more people. This is Dr. Barry, and I will see you next time.